out of hand. I don't even know how it got to this point. As you can tell, I'm surrounded by shoe boxes. Lots and lots of shoe boxes. Recently, I fell down a rabbit hole of watching like shoe collection videos and it kind of really inspired me to do my own shoe collection video. So I figured this week's video is all going to be about my shoe collection. I need to split this up into probably four parts because I think I have that many pairs of shoes that I don't want to keep you here for like decades. I feel like these types of videos really help you come to the realization of how much stuff you have. So the first part of my shoe collection videos will feature my boots just because I figured we're fall heading into winter. It's kind of the more appropriate thing and yes, I keep everything in shoe boxes. I'm one of those people, I don't know why, I just like to keep shoe boxes which makes storing them kind of a bitch and I'm not gonna lie, getting all these shoes out to film this video for you guys was a little bit of a workout. But before we get on with this video, let me get my disclaimer out of the way. If you guys are brand new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below just because I currently don't have a regular upload schedule and the easiest way to be notified when I post a new video is by hitting that subscribe button down below and if you want to make your life a little bit easier, you can hit the bell notification button. Give me a thumbs up if you guys love shoe collection videos. I figure if I'm going to really do a true shoe collection video, I'm going to include every pair of shoes I own. It's not going to be only shoes I've recently picked up because I am genuinely curious to know how many pairs of shoes I actually own for my own personal knowledge. So yeah, you're going to see shoes that are mostly kind of um, contemporary brands. I have a few pairs of designer shoes, but I'm not leaving anything out just because I really am genuinely curious how many pairs of shoes I actually own. There is really not going to be any rhyme or reason to the order of how I'm going to show you guys my shoes. I try to group them by brand, but honestly, it's a lot of work. So the first pair of booties I'm going to show you guys in my collection is this pair of Manolo Blahnik Egerton booties. You guys have already seen this. I mentioned this in my previous luxury shoe haul video. And yes, I still have not worn them, but yeah, like, let's just... Like, let's start the game off strong with my Manolo Blahniks. The next pair of booties I have is the Toga Pola 4 Buckle Western Booties. This pair of booties was the pair of boots I was using to test out the waters. To see if I can commit to the Chloe Susanna boots, you guys know which boots I'm talking about. Because at one point we were constantly being bombarded by images about the Chloe Susanna boots. But I just, there was just something about it that I couldn't commit. One, there was a lot going on. There was like the buckles, the studded. I just like, I couldn't commit myself to like purchasing them, but I figured this was a good way to test the water out to see if I liked the trend. Because it's a very similar vibe, it has the four buckles, it has like a western vibe, but it's just kind of much more toned down because it's just really the buckles that are drawing the eye. I love these so much that I actually have a second pair. Yes, I also own them in the burgundy, but to be honest, the burgundy is a pair that I don't wear as often just because the black ones are so much easier. I just throw them on, there's not much thought to it. With the burgundy pair, I require a little bit much more thought into my outfit. Although this technically is like a freaking neutral to be honest. So I don't even know why I just don't come pull these out as much. I don't know if it's because these ones are usually just out already. Moving on to my Chloe booties. You guys have also seen this pair of booties. These are the Chloe Riley booties. Again, I haven't had much opportunity to wear these this year, but Lily has been loving hers. She was just basically telling me that these boots just go with everything and make every outfit that she wears to work look good. But keeping on with the Chloe family, don't be scared. I don't have a ton of Chloe shoes. These are two pairs of boots I own from C by Chloe, which is kind of their less expensive brand. So the first pair I have is this pair of C by Chloe Dasha boots, I believe these are called. I absolutely love the color of these boots. Can we just like look at it? It's like a gorgeous cognac. Um, so these are the stack heel boots um, and I really love the detail of this boots. But if I was going to be honest with you guys, this pair of boots is a little bit high for like everyday wear. The only complaint I have about these is the tie here kind of like touches the ground and like skims it and I'm a little bit of a like dermaphobe and it kind of annoys me that I'm just like picking up all the germs outside when I wear these. So you guys are going to completely think I'm insane because I actually also own the C by Chloe Dasha boot in the flat version. Yes, I, like, I don't even know 
know what I was thinking because initially when I saw this pair of boots, it had zero appeal to me. I honestly was just going to pass on them, but then Lily tried them on and I was like, those are actually kind of cute. And yes, we both own this pair of boots. As you can tell by now, we pretty much own very similar, if not identical items. I was not 100% sold on this pair of boots pretty much because of the color. On camera, it's coming out like a lot deeper than what it is in real life. Um, it's actually like a very like light beige, but honestly at the price point I got them for, I think I got them for like $90, which is like Zara shoe pricing, but like 10 times the quality. So I was like, oh, if I don't really love the color, I'm pretty sure I can dye it. Like if I dyed it black or dark brown, I think I would have gotten a lot more wear out of it. Actually, I have gotten zero wear out of it because I haven't worn this pair of shoes since I owned it. Just a little disturbing to be honest. On to the next pair of booties slash boots. Do you guys call these ankle boots or booties? I just don't even know what to call them anymore at this point but you guys will know once you see it. This is a pair of acne booties I picked up and I loved this this like the subtle detail about these. I don't know if you guys can tell but the heel here has kind of like you know like a shape to it. I don't even know how to describe it. It has like an exaggerated heel right here like I don't know you guys can tell it's pretty much not coming through I love the fact that this is not a super high heel and it's not super thin so I'm a little bit more stable with it plus it's a round toe so you can never go wrong with it now let's just move on to my rag and bone collection yes I'm saying collection because I think I own about five pairs of boots from them. So the first pair is this Chelsea boot style. I think these are called the Dixon style, which I absolutely love. This pair of boots has lasted me for so long. I think I've had them for about six years and they practically look brand new. I've actually worn these like on vacation. They're super comfortable. I've had the heel replaced just because of wear and tear, but other than that... I have no complaints about it. The next pair of booties I have from Rag and Bone are the Harlow booties. Do you guys remember when these were around? Like all the celebrities were wearing them and this was like another hot shoe and I absolutely love them, especially this caramel color. This is like a suede version. Um, I just noticed a stain. I don't know if you guys can tell right here, but it's from the hardware. It's nothing I did, but honestly the, the leather strap covers it. But this is also a shoe that I don't wear as often as I should because I'm petrified I'm gonna get this dirty. Even though I've sprayed it, I always spray my shoes, but I'm just, oh, what is this mark? <laughs> I noticed another little mark here. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm a little neurotic when it comes to my shoes. So not only do I own this pair of Harlow booties, I actually own them in black as well. As you can see, there's kind of like a repetitive theme. I feel like I'm that person. When I like certain shoe style, I tend to buy them in multiple colors, which is ridiculous because I don't need both of these. But they were such good deals. Like I think I got these for like 60 bucks at the Bay Warehouse. Which is insane because these shoes retail for like $600. Um, they're not as popular now but honestly I really don't care. The next pair of rag and bone booties I own is the Kingsley. I actually didn't think I would get as much wear out of these as I did with the Harlow booties. Just because I didn't think my personal style was cool enough to pull off this boot just because it has kind of like a high low shaft. But this pair of boots I have to say I've worn to death because I actually had to get the heel tap replaced whereas the Harlow pair I was kind of like more careful with just due to the coloring and I think that was also another factor that this pair with a darker brown so if I did get some dirt on it it was not really gonna matter because you can't really tell with a dark brown boot but this pair was another pair that I actually love I just I should break this out the last pair of rag and bone boots I own is the moto boot this boot I've loved I love the aesthetic of it I just have a very hard time actually wearing this boot I just oh, I don't know if you guys can give me any suggestions on how to wear it I think I have an idea now but I just don't know why I couldn't figure out how to wear this boot it's a fall boot let's be honest mind you people wear boots any season they want to but I feel like this is such a typical fall boot but because it's so harsh it's leather if I wear this in the fall I typically wear a leather jacket as my fall jacket and that's just too much leather going on too much biker elements which make it look really cheesy to be honest so this is a pair of dark brown I actually had my eye on for the black pair but honestly I found them at a sample sale for $50 so I wasn't really gonna care what color they are they have like a little bit of like distressing or marks on it which I really don't care because I think it just kind of adds to the look and feel of the boots. And the other thing I have to admit with these boots, why I actually don't wear them as often as I should, they're actually really hard to get on and off. Like if I wear this pair of boots, I better make sure I'm not going over to someone's house 
because I, I, I don't want to be that person who's struggling to take off my shoe or out shopping because if I decide to try on a pair of shoes, I'm going to need someone to tug these off. I need to figure out how to break these out again because I feel like these motorcycle boots are making kind of like a big comeback this season. The next pair of booties I own is by the brand LK Bennett. Do you guys remember the LK Bennett brand? I feel like it was always what Kate Middleton was known for wearing, the pumps, the classic pumps that she's always photographed in. Unfortunately, the pumps didn't work for me, like I didn't find them comfortable for me, but I did manage to find this pair of booties. Uh, this pair of booties I've actually owned for like maybe 10 years because I feel like I've had these since my old job and I've been at my old job for like a long time so yeah I've owned these for a super long time so you guys don't think I'm like a crazy shopper who literally just bought all these pairs of shoes right now this shoe collection has been like accumulated throughout the years back to the booties when I was actually googling these for the name I actually discovered they're actually like a cold weather boot because you know of the shirt lining but I don't think it really is because the shirt lining is only like at the ankle part like the rest of the boot is just leather so I don't think it's meant for a Montreal winter I feel like I should pull these out again just because the shirling is making a huge comeback um, and it's a great fall boot to be honest I don't know why I kind of stopped wearing it honestly let's just be honest with myself I probably stopped wearing it because I got other boots so let's just stop fooling myself into like things I forgot. Moving on to my next pair of booties, this is what I love to call as my pirate booty just because the leather part here that's folded over is very kind of reminiscent of a pirate boot to be honest. This is by the brand 10 Crosby by Derek Lamb. I picked these up because of the color combination. Like I absolutely love the cognac with the black. The only problem with this pair of booties is I absolutely have a ridiculously hard time wearing these just because I don't know how to style them. I am like completely lost at how to style them. But because the shaft is not super fitted, it's kind of loose and it kind of folds over. Like I only wear this with one outfit, which is ridiculous. You, I should not just have a pair of boots for one outfit, but I have no idea how else to wear these. So comment down below if you have any suggestions on how I can wear these. The next pair of booties I own is this dual tone boot with also a western vibe. This is by the brand Reiki Neen. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I'm probably not. I'm probably butchering it. But I actually love this boot. It is like a dual tone booty with black and white and it has kind of like very intricate woven details which I absolutely love but again I've worn them once. Next is a pair of Isabel Morag booties I own. This pair of booties I love and hate. I actually wear these quite often because they are just a black kind of like Chelsea booty style with a small heel. The heel I absolutely love. It's kind of like a triangle heel which I think Isabel Morant is very well known for. It's small. Although when I showed these to my mom, my mom was like, are those heels even comfortable? Because they look like they're not going to be comfortable. I think if they were the taller heel version. I can completely see where she's coming from, but because they're just kind of like a kitten heel, I actually have no issues with them. What I kind of don't love about these is the fact that, they, I don't know if you guys can tell, I feel like, and this could completely be something in my head only, that they make my feet look much wider than they really are. If they had kind of like a more slimmer profile, I think I would have been wearing these a lot more than I do actually. I feel like that's completely all in my head because it's a black booty. Black makes everything look slimmer, you no? Know? Anyways, on to the next pair. What do you guys think I'm even more insane than I am? The next pair of booties I have is by the brand Bell by Sigerson and Morrison. This is also a very western inspired booty. This is called the Kieran booty, I think. What is really unique about this pair of booties is it actually has like a hidden wedge. So you're actually like a little bit taller than you really are because it looks like it's just like a very like low heel like a regular flat boot Chelsea booty but it actually has a hidden wedge. To be fully honest with you guys this was a pair of booties I picked up as my kind of mm, if it's raining I really don't care if these get damaged whereas with my other booties I'm a lot more careful with. I don't know if I'm the only one who does this but I tend to really bring my shoes to work uh, and change at work. I don't want to have a lot of wear and tear. Oh my god, I sound insane by saying that. But you guys, if you guys are shoe people, you guys know what I'm saying. You guys just kind of want to minimize the damage the outside elements can have on your boots or shoes. So you have to have a pair of shoes where you really don't care if you get caught in the rain, someone steps on you. Like, I don't know, am I the only one who thinks like that? Please tell me I am not the only one who thinks like that because I need to know I am sane 
or at least a little bit sane. So this was my pair of like, I don't really care, give a crap. Uh, if it rains, I'm just going to wear them, and they've served me really well. Guys, we're getting close to the end of the booty portion, and I only have a few more pairs to go through. So next up is this pair of YSL booties. These are called the Jodar booties, I think. But this is also a pair of booties I got at a ridiculous price. Not like a $50 price tag, because they are YSL. Like, they're already marked down ridiculous, so like, I think already like half price. And then the sale girl was like, well, if you're interested in them, I can give you an extra 20%. And who's going to say no to an extra 20% on a YSL boot that is in my size because I'm a size 7 and getting designer shoes on sale is super tough whereas freaking the Lily with a size 5 foot shoes just tend to be raining down from the skies for her. The next pair of booties you've already seen me talk about they are my Philip Lim Alexa booties. I am not going to go over the details of them. If you guys are interested I'll link the video somewhere up above here or somewhere down there but yeah Philip Lim Alexa booty Love them, worn them once, yes, worn them once. This pair is a super oldie pair that I haven't worn in years. This is a pair of boots by Rose Gold. I don't even know if the brand still exists, but I figured they should be included because I'm going to be honest with you guys. This pair of boots, I think, has been around for at least 12, if not 15 years. This is a pair of my, like, first like low boots that I picked up again at a sample sale so they weren't super expensive but I wore these everywhere I even wore them to a work trip to Boston and they were super comfortable for like hours of like walking I should really just kind of break these out again moving on to the sock booty category actually this was a pair of boots I feel like I kind of settled on because I was looking for a sock booty it was that moment, like I think like two years ago, where the sock booty trend was super in and I, I, like for the life of me, could not find a pair of sock booties that I liked at a price point I was willing to buy. So I spotted these at a sample sale um, and they were like 50 bucks, which is ridiculous. This is by a brand called Joie, um, all leather, super soft. I love the silhouette. I'm not complaining about the silhouette. The only thing I'm complaining about, which is not even like a big complaint, is the heel height. The heel height, as you guys can tell, is like a small kitten heel. I feel like if it was slightly higher, maybe like three inches or even two and a half, the silhouette of the boot would be so much better. Like It's just me nitpicking at stuff and me just being kind of desperate at the time for a sock booty so I kind of just like bought something that was at the right price point that was well made. Did I absolutely 100% love it? I would say I was probably 80% in love with it. I do wear it so don't get me wrong, I do wear this pair of booties but yeah, this is the problem with shopping on sales. You end up, I don't know if it's just me, you kind of end up settling on stuff. Mind you, is this settling? Yes, it's probably settling. You guys probably don't care about this. Let's just move on to the next pair of boots. The next pair of boots I own is what Lily loves to refer to as my buddy, the elf shoes. Yes, they are elf shoes. I must admit, when she said that and I thought about it, I like, yes, they absolutely look like elf shoes. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera. They're a Chelsea style boot that's in a velvet emerald green. This is by the brand Penelope Shivers, which I also think Kate Middleton is famously known for wearing because she wears the riding boot, if I'm not mistaken, frequently. But this pair of boots is called the Cubano booties, I believe. I actually love how they look. Again, it's a pair of boots that I have a hard time wearing. I actually only wear this pair of boots with one specific outfit, which again is also ridiculous. Why would you have one pair of boots with one outfit? And the reason why I have a hard time wearing this is because of the color. I love the color, but I find that I can't pair this with a pair of blue jeans just because the contrast of the blue and green just is like not my cup of tea. Like it may go well, but I feel like it's not my cup of tea when it comes to pairing this with a pair of jeans. With a pair of black jeans, it's not bad. But yeah, I don't know why I have such a hard time wearing this. Um, if you guys have any suggestions again, leave them down below because your girl needs to wear these a lot more than that one outfit. And I'm pretty much not wearing them now because that one outfit was a work outfit because they were like with high-waisted dress pads. So yeah, this is a problem. I, like by now I think I have three pairs of shoes that I only wear with one specific outfit. Moving on to my next pair of booties. This is a pair of booties from Paul Andrew. I believe this was done in collaboration with Goop 
Bushwick. At least that's what I found out when I was googling this. This pair of boots is actually one of my most worn ones. It's a stacked heel, but they're not super high, so I'm super comfortable in them. They're suede, but what I love about them is the little studded details along the edging here. They kind of look like nail heads. I feel like you guys are really going to laugh at me and think I have an obsession with the Western boots or booties because this is a pair of Aquatella booties I have that also look very Western-ish. This is the Fana booty, I believe. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Aquatella brand. They are an Italian brand. They're really known for their kind of like waterproof boots. And I will tell you, you guys, this pair of boots is super waterproof. I've worn them in the rain. Heavy rain, light snow, my feet were dry. And the best part is your feet are super duper warm like they are ridiculously warm the only thing about this pair of boots is like I really wish um, they had a bit of more traction at the bottom so I can actually wear them as real winter boots but unfortunately they're kind of smooth so it's really more of a fall boot the last pair of booties I own is this pair of Alexander Wang Andy booties can we just take a moment and look at the detail of this boot like this boot is such an interesting detail it has a cutout kind of like heel portion which alexander wine is all known for like all his booties always tend to have like a cutout heel portion with like a metal like detail so this one is silver it is a wedge heel again i picked these up at a sample sale for a ridiculous price like 50 bucks like i'm not kidding you i got these for 50 bucks even though they're really not my size they're like size 38 but to be honest because the shaft is so fitted, I don't think I would have been able to get my foot into a size 37 because it was a struggle just to get into a size 38 and that's why I managed to luck out on them because a lot of people were actually trying this pair of shoes on but they just couldn't get their foot in, but I did. But this is also one of the pair of shoes that are hard to wear. I tend to wear this a lot with culottes for some reason because I feel like, you know, the higher shaft, shorter pants, the wide leg kind of makes this makes it kind of ideal for that kind of silhouette. Am I like, I don't know, do I, I'm, I'm, I'm way overthinking this I think, but yes, I feel like any pointed shoe I have, I tend to pair it more with wide-legged pants than skinny, just because I feel like the silhouette on me doesn't look as nice as it looks on some people. We are almost to the end, you guys. We have made it to the boot portion of my shoe collection, which I don't have a lot of them because I feel like I am just not really tall boot kind of gal if you know what I mean like I don't know I just I feel like now that I think about it looking through my collection I don't reach for tall boots as much as I do ankle boots for some reason I just don't know if they're just too fussy I'm gonna show you guys all the boots I own excluding winter boots like hardcore winter boots just because those are like a necessity everyone needs a pair of winter boots if you live in a city that has a real winter first pair of boots I have is this pair of Pedro Garcia. The heel has like a mirrored effect. I think this pair is called the Disco Boots. I'm not exactly 100% sure, but it kind of would make sense with like a mirrored disco heel. My mom absolutely loved this pair of boots. I actually was thinking about returning it and she's like, absolutely not. You need to keep them. That's such a unique boot. You don't have a boot with a heel like this. So I kind of wore this more for parties, Christmas parties. If you need a pair of black boots, this is a pair of I would do, especially if you just have like an all black dress, this is a nice kind of like pop of a detail. These are actually super comfortable. I think, to be honest, I've worn them once. Yeah. I've worn them once. To one Christmas party. Yeah. We're just not going to talk about that. Next pair of boots I'm going to show you guys, I've owned for about 15 years. I kid you not, I bought these when I got my first real job after graduating. And it's this pair of wedge boots from Michael Kors. There's just something about this pair of boots that I just have kept and I wear them every winter if I needed to go to a dinner or a Christmas party and I don't kind of want to bring a pair of shoes to change. You guys, you girls know what I'm talking about, especially if you live in a city in winter because when you go to dinner, often you have to wear your like real winter boots and when you get to the restaurant, you often have to change your shoes into kind of like just your shoes. But with this pair of boots, because I have had them for so long and I really don't care if they get stained by salt and honestly, I don't know why they have not had kind of like any salt stains. Plus they're not super stiff so they can kind of give you that slouchy vibe if you want to slouch it. This has served me well, Michael Kors. The next pair of boots I own is my one and only pair of over the knee boots. And if you guys think it is a pair of Stuart Wiseman's, you guys are totally 
wrong. <laughs> they are not. I just couldn't bring myself to commit to the Stuart Wiseman boots. I just don't know. Like, they were everywhere and I was really tempted at one point, but you guys know me. If I see something constantly everywhere, it makes me want them even less. So I picked up a pair from Donald J. Pilner and this pair, honestly, it's more than enough. It is enough for me to dip my toes in to the over the knee trend. This has a kind of like a pointed toe, which is per the perfect point to be honest. It's not too pointed, it's not too round. This pair of boots is also another pair of boots that I'm guilty to wearing in winter to dinner, especially if I don't want to bring a pair of boots to change. And again, I just sprayed them and I don't have any salt stains, which is like a, a miracle because at one point I remember it was super slushy outside and I did have to step into it. You Canadian girls will know what I'm talking about. The one thing I do have to say about this pair of over the knee boots, I cannot wear this over a pair of jeans because the shaft does not have any stretch to it. It is super, just like a straight up piece of suede. So I can freely just wear this with a pair of tights and a dress because uh, otherwise I need a person on the other end tugging this boot because there is no way that boot is coming off with a pair of jeans. Even if I wear like a pair of fleece line tights, I'm asking for trouble. That's how little give there is in this shaft. You guys are really going to think I have a western obsession because the next pair of boots is also very western theme. This is a pair of boots I got from Ralph Lauren. Um, you can tell it has the buckles here. Um, it even has the pull tab. Uh, what really attracted me to this pair of boots is the stitching because I don't know if you guys can tell it has contrast stitching. It's white stitching on a black leather boot. It's round toe which I really did love the silhouette at the time. I don't wear these as often as I should because they are a little bit high for like long durations or long wear like Am I making sense? You guys know what it means. It's a little bit high for me to wear for a prolonged period of time. It's doable, like if I don't walk a lot and I'm in the office environment, this pair of boots is completely doable. These are actually also really warm because they are lined, which is really funny because there's no traction at the bottom or any significant traction to last a Canadian winter because there's this traction, I wouldn't even count on. I continue with the western boot theme. Here is my pair of western boots boots legit. This is my pair of fry boots. You can tell they legit look like cowboy boots minus all the intricate like stitch detail. This is just very plain. I've honestly owned this pair of boots for about 10 years I would say. Probably 10 years. 10 if not longer. And this is why I tend to invest more in my shoes. Just because they last a lot longer and these have totally made a resurgence especially fry boots are making its way back into the mainstream and I own a pair. I should definitely bust these back up because I feel like last season was all about the western boot trend. There were so many brands that were coming up with like western inspired cowboy boots and I already own a pair so I totally should bust these back out again but again, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. The next pair of boots I own is this pair from Browns. I swear to god this pair of boots I probably owned for more than 15 years because I got these when I was in university and that was a while ago but again I feel like square toes are making a big comeback because this pair of boots totally have a square toe. What attracted me to this pair of boots is the fact that there was like a mix between suede and leather. It had kind of really lovely contrasting detail even though it's completely monotone it just has like a really nice pop. It also kind of has a very 70s vibe to me because the shaft is not super fitted. It's very slouchy so there's really different ways you can wear these and there are some traction at the bottom so these are definitely winter boots although I wouldn't wear these on like a super icy day but you know if we're going out for a nice little dinner, I totally would bust these out. I don't know why I haven't busted these out because they're probably buried in my closet. Moving on to my Dolce Vita boots. This pair of boots I've actually worn quite a lot because I've actually had to get it resold. These look flat, but they are not flat because there is like a hidden wedge. This is a super basic boot. Black, you can't go wrong with it. Especially when you don't want to wear like a super high heel boot, this is actually a really nice um, silhouette nothing to complain about it. This boot I've actually owned for maybe about 10 years as well. Leather has held up super well. Can't complain. So there is a little bit of wear on the heel, but this wear is from driving. You guys know what I'm talking about. Driving ruins your shoes. I kid you not. I literally switch shoes now. I do not drive in any of my nicer shoes because I don't want the wear on the heel like it has on this one. Another pair of Dolce Vita boots I own is this pair. I think this is called the Dolphin Boots. Again, this is a pair that I've owned for maybe about 10-15 years and I still love them to this day because of the coloring. Look at the coloring. It's like this gorgeous cognac brown color and 
honestly, like I still bust these out every year. The last pair of boots I have, you guys, is my winter boots actually, and I know I mentioned I wasn't going to show you guys my winter boots, but since I grabbed them when I was moving all these shoe boxes out, I might as well just include it in my shoe collection. This is this pair of moto boots from Fry. These are a legit winter boot because of the heavy traction, and they are Sherling line, so they are super warm. The only thing I complain about this pair of boots is they are kind of really heavy. And the other thing I've noticed with my winter boots, I don't know if I'm the only one that has experienced this, I tend to lose my socks in winter boots. For some reason, I wear socks and they slip off and I'm constantly tugging or I'm constantly having to stop and try to like put my socks back on. Am I the only one who experiences this? I almost forgot this pair of Jean Vito Rossi boots. These are the Laura boots. It is a midi length boot with a super slouchy silhouette. It's made out of buttery soft leather, which makes me petrified to wear these outside because I feel like I'm going to get these scratched up like no tomorrow, especially since I have a habit of not picking up my feet completely. I know I get called out about that all the time by Lily, but yes, so this will kind of remain an indoor shoe for now. Regardless, it's an indoor shoe right now because I'm a pandemic, but if we weren't in a pandemic, you guys know what I'm talking about, you shoe lovers, that these shoes are just really meant for an office environment where I don't have to expose them to the outside elements. Oh my god, I completely sound insane at this point, but you guys know what I mean. I'm pretty sure shoe people know what I mean. So that pretty much wraps up this video and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye now.